Hi, I'm Mark Kilgard, and I'll be giving an introduction to NV Path Rendering. Uh, this is the first in a four-part series um, on GPU accelerated path rendering. The purpose of this presentation is to give you an overview of GPU accelerated path rendering using the stencil then cover paradigm. Uh, and then also explain and demonstrate the NV Path Rendering API and that portion of the talk is primarily aimed at programmers. Also, I'll introduce you to the contents of NVIDIA's NVPR SDK so you can start writing path rendering examples yourself. So what is path rendering? It's a rendering approach for resolution independent 2D graphics. Uh, occlusion and transparency depend on rendering order so it uses the painter's algorithm rather than the depth buffer as used in conventional 3D rendering. The basic primitive in path rendering is the path that can be filled or stroke. And a path is a sequence of path commands uh, that define essentially an outline or a contour of some sort of shape. The commands that you have in a path are commands like move to, line to, curve to, arc to, and then you can close the path. Um, there's a lot of different standards that incorporate path rendering. Uh, Postscript is probably the oldest standard. PDF, true type fonts, uh, Adobe's Flash and web pages. Uh, the Scalable Vector Graphics standard, or SVG, that's in HTML5. Uh, HTML5 Canvas, Silverlight, and Office drawings are all examples of path rendering content. There's a bunch of existent APIs for doing path rendering. Apple supports Quartz 2D, or now Core Graphics. Uh, Kronos has an API called OpenVG. Microsoft has a Direct 2D API. There's also several open source APIs like Cairo, Skia, uh, Qt. Uh, and the anti-grain graphic system. So path rendering is different from 3D graphics. If you've used the GPU before, it's primarily probably doing 3D rendering with OpenGL or Direct3D. What I try to summarize in this slide is just kind of the characteristics of each rendering paradigm and how they're different. I'll just cover a few of these just to give you a flavor for what the differences is. But in dimensionality, uh, 3D rendering is generally done with uh, projective 3D, whereas path rendering is uh, normally all 2D, and it's typically affine transformations, so scales and rotates and, and translates, um, but not projection. Uh, the pixel mapping in both is resolution independent. For occlusion, path rendering uses the painting painter's algorithm of rendering paths in some particular defined order, whereas 3D rendering uses depth buffering. There's a lot of other differences, and it's important to understand if you're coming to path rendering from a 3D perspective, just be open. This is a very well-developed rendering paradigm that's been around for 30 years, and it has its own inner logic to how it works. So what's the motivation here? Well, well first of all, if, if we look back and said, how did 3D rendering work you know, a dozen years ago? What you'd see was that there was starting to be 3D accelerators uh, in PCs. Um, but still at that point, a lot of the rendering was still done on the CPU. Now, as time progressed, we got to the point where basically all the rendering is now done on the GPU. And no one uses 3D software renderers anymore. It's just not, um, it just doesn't have the kind of performance that, that you'd want. Now, if you looked at path rendering, this is things like Adobe Acrobat or stuff that happens in your web browser like Adobe Flash, pretty much all that rendering is really today happening on the CPU. You're just starting to see in 2011 a little bit of rendering um, starting to happen on the GPU with, with APIs like Direct2D. But primarily, uh, most of the path rendering is all taking place on, on the CPU, and we'd really like to change that. We want to harness the power of the GPU. It's a graphics task, and the point of NV path rendering is to really make path rendering into a GPU accelerated task. So NV path rendering is an OpenGL extension. It uses a, an approach called stenciled in cover, or STC. The idea is, if you want to go rendering a path, the first, the first step is to create a path, but then the actual rendering involves a step one that's stenciling the path into the stencil buffer, and the GPU provides extremely fast stenciling of filled or stroke paths. Then the step two is to cover that path with some conservative geometry that the 
that the NV path rendering extension makes for you where you can actually test against the stencil coverage. And at this point, the application is allowed to configure arbitrary shading. Uh, so you can use um, fixed function, you can use GLSL, you can use CG, uh, you can use assembly. It's all really up to you. The, the details of how this really works, uh, I'll discuss uh, later. The support that's designed into NV path rendering is really to support the union of the functionality of all the major path rendering standards. And the idea is that NV path rendering is the basis that standards or other APIs can be built upon. So NV path rendering includes all the stroking embellishments such as um, dashing and join styles and um, end caps, everything that you expect. Uh, there's first class support for text and fonts because that's a really important aspect of path rendering. It also allows, uh, has functionality that allows you to mix path rendering with traditional 3D and programmable shading. So path rendering isn't just a, another way of doing things. You can mix path rendering with your uh, 3D rendering inside of your OpenGL application. And that's really important. We want path rendering to be something that's on par uh, with 3D rendering. So here's a pipeline and the, the red and the green show the existing OpenGL pipeline. On the left is the pixel pipeline for specifying textures or doing draw pixel operations. In the middle is the vertex pipeline that transforms vertices and symbols them into triangles and rasterizes them. On the, the right is the new pipeline introduced by NV path rendering where you can specify paths, you can transform paths, uh, and then you can perform a stencil or stroke operation here. Uh, and then you can also go and then do your covering operation. And the cover operation flows through the rasterization, including all the fragment operations. And you can do blending and scissoring and all the standard things you're used to doing in OpenGL at the fragment level. Uh, so we'll be talking about what this, this new uh, path pipeline is really all about. Um, first, let's talk about the structure of the API. Um, and we'll go through each one of these, but there's path object management. Then you can specify path objects. You can set a bunch of parameters on them. And then you can actually do the, the rendering operations, the stencil operation and the cover operation for both filling and stroking. Then there's a few miscellaneous things that you can do, various queries um, that are very useful in, in building real applications. So we'll go through each one of these. First in path object management, the standard OpenGL way of managing objects is they have these GLUnt or 32-bit unsigned names. And these are application generated in NV path rendering, uh, just like texture objects or display lists are. So they're not returned by the driver. And that's actually important for uh, font glyphs and instancing. So you can know that the ordering matches the order characters appear in Unicode or um, any kind of font standard. Uh, there's standard uh, API calls uh, for uh, managing the paths. There's uh, calls to determine if an object uh, handle is a path and you can generate paths and you can also delete paths and these should be familiar to anyone using OpenGL uh, objects. When you specify paths, you can do it a number of different ways. Um, first, you can specify a path with a string, and this matches standard grammars that exist in PostScript and SVG, or the Scalable Vector Graphics uh, World Wide Web Consortium standard. And here, you would say GL path string, and you would give it one of these strings, and it would just create your path directly from it. It's an extremely convenient way to create path objects. You can also create paths by giving an array of path commands and a corresponding array of path coordinates. Um, you can do that with the GL paths command initially, but you can also do updates of subcommands or the coordinates or small ranges of the coordinates. And this includes being able to edit the path, uh, insert and delete ranges of path commands. You can also create paths from fonts. So you can uh, give a range of glyphs or character points uh, inside some named font, uh, and then you can create a range of path objects that correspond with them, and there's two different ways to, to do that. You can also create paths from existing paths, so you can linearly combine two paths that have the same uh, path command skeleton. Uh, this also, in the simple case of just one path, you're copying the path. You can interpolate between two paths, or you can arbitrarily wait 
um, a plurality of paths. Uh, finally, you can transform an existing path into a new space uh, by applying some kind of uh, linear transform. Uh, when we look at the actual path commands, uh, they're very standard. Uh, you can move to some XY location. You can draw a line to the next XY location. You can specify quadratic and cubic Bezier curves, and you can draw elliptical arcs. And when you're done with your path and you want to close it off, there's a close path commands. These are standard things that are available in all the different path standards. There's also a lot of variations to support the variety that's available in all the different standards. Um, there are relative versions, specialized versions for horizontal and vertical lines, specialized arcs to correspond to the way OpenVG and PostScript manage arcs. And the idea here is to provide the union of all the path commands of all major path rendering standards. Here's a table that has all the different path commands um, and their relative version. And then also it says the number of uh, scalar coordinates that each path command expects. So you can specify paths uh, from a string. That's probably the most convenient way. Uh, you call uh, GeoPathString in V. Uh, there's two formats supported in the driver. Uh, one corresponds to the SVG grammar. The other corresponds to PostScript subgrammar for user paths. Uh, so you'll recognize it has the kind of um, uh, RPN or reverse Polish notation style of, of commands. Uh, here's the grammar for all the commands that are there, and this is copied directly from the SVG spec, but you can know that it really conforms to a, a, a real standard. Here's the PostScript grammar, uh, and it corresponds to the grammar supported by the PostScript standard. Uh, it's a little bit bigger grammar. It actually supports uh, support for binary specification of paths in a portable way, so it allows you to specify uh, paths in a very compact way. Path objects uh, also allow you to set various parameters uh, for filling. There's just a few parameters, the default fill mode and fill mask and fill cover mode. But stroking has a lot more uh, parameters. You can specify the stroke width, uh, various uh, capping and join styles for dashing. There's a lot of different parameters um, that you can set. And, and then there's a cover mode and, and mask parameters. Um, here's shown some of the different um, in cap and join styles and various dashing styles that then on all these are supported. So here are all those parameters laid out so you can see the parameter names, the type, and then kind of a description of what the valid range of values is. Um, when you go and use the dashing state, there's a particular command for specifying dashing. Um, you specify uh, an array of lengths in an on off sequence, and it has its own dedicated query as well. So uh, here's a couple examples of dashing content. So we're going to drop off here and uh, rejoin you with uh, part two.